All right, now I want to talk through maintaining your Alta X. So I think a big part of successful drone operations is what I would classify as preparation and then also um, preventative maintenance, making sure that you spot things before they go wrong. So we kind of bucket, we break our maintenance into two different buckets. Um, there's things that, you know, there's kind of a mental checklist that I have before every flight, but the main maintenance that we do is about after every 15 flights and then every 15 flight hours. So for every 15 flights, I'll talk you through the things that I'm looking at. Um, every 15 flights, I'm looking at these M3 bolts on the top of the active blade. I'm making sure that these are tight. I'm making sure that this M4 bolt here that actually holds the blade prop or the, the blade on is tight making sure that all of the balance weights are tight and secure and they haven't changed, none of them have fallen out. Um, I'm looking at the flopped after bumpers. I'm making sure that they look like they're in good shape. I'm actuating them, making sure that there's no slop in the system. We want each of these bumpers to be touching and engaged in its neutral point. So as these wear out, they could get squished like that and then start to have a little bit too much play in the system. And then I'm gonna move down I'm going to look at these bolts that actually attach the active blade to the motor. I'm going to make sure that those are tight. You can access these actually going right through the uh, active blade, so that's the easiest way to get to those. And then working my way down, I'm going to look at these M4 bolts here that hold the boom. I'm going to make sure that those are very tight. It's super important that the boom is clocked to a certain angle to make sure that we have good yaw authority in all instances and it's very important that that is clamped well. So make sure those four guys are tight. And all of these bolts come from the factory with the appropriate thread locker on um, and we publish torque spec for these bolts in our wiki. So if you ever need to check to make sure that bolts are torqued, if you actually have a torque wrench and are using a torque wrench, then you can look at those specs and make sure that you match up with what with what we've got. Um, I'm also at this point gonna go through and spot check some of the fasteners on the chassis, make sure that they're tight. Uh, sometimes I won't do all of them. Sometimes I'll just grab a handful of the more important ones that, I, that I'll look at and make sure that everything's tight there. Uh, the ones that hold the hinge, the ones that hold the, the stiffener uh, pieces, I'll look at those. Um, close out panels, I'll make sure that these are tight. So the, there's some of these that are not quick release and I'll make sure their fasteners are tight, they're not falling out. I'll make sure the close out panels that are quick release, that these plugs are fitting tight in the grommet and they, they really lot, latch in securely, they don't feel like they're gonna fall out. Uh, next I'll look at the FPV mount. I wanna make sure that all the fasteners there are tight, the vibration isolators are in good shape, the wire is still strain relief nicely, I don't see any chafing or any of that kind of thing. Uh, FPV historically has been a pain in the butt to troubleshoot live when you're on set. So I always want to make sure that that's dialed and, and robust before, before showing up to shoot anything. Um, the boom strut bolts, this is a really important one. Uh, these boom struts hold the boom in place. They hold it open and preloaded. They, stiff, they also stiffen the boom and they also serve to fold the whole mechanism. These are definitely a single point failure on the Alta. So it's Alta X, it's very important that these are in good shape. Um, there's a little ball link in here that allows us to swivel back and forth, and then there's balls that it mounts to each place. So I'll definitely make sure that all both of these are tight. There's little fasteners that capture the, the ball that you can see, so I'll make sure those are tight, make sure everything's uh, sandwiched tightly and nothing's coming loose. Make sure that the actual bolt that goes through and attaches to this boom uh, mount is tight. Um, and then I'm going to look at the GPS mount and make sure that, that that is in good shape, that it hasn't been bumped, that the GPS is still aligned with the direction of flight very accurately so that I get good tracking. If that ever gets skewed, you might get bad tracking. It shouldn't be possible to skew it, but we have seen them get broken before from <clears throat> crashes or ground handling or that kind of thing. Um, so that wraps up what I'm going to look at every 15 flights. And every, every 15 flight hours, I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at props. I'm going to inspect the leading edge. I'm going to inspect the trailing edge. I'm going to look for chips. I'm going to look for wear. I'm going to look for damage. I'm going to look for any damage along the blade route. Um, potentially, if you were traveling with this and you, you know, somebody did something bad and shoved it really hard that way, you could get damage on the blade route. I don't like 
Personally, I don't like any damage on the props. Uh, we're really relying on these things to work. Uh, and I want to make sure that they're in the best shape they can possibly be. I'm going to look at the, the dampers again on Active Blade, make sure that they're in good shape. Um, if you need to change them, it's not too hard to do so. It's just kind of pulling them out, um, pushing, pushing new ones back in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel the bearings in the Active Blade and make sure everything feels smooth, feels tight, no slop, no play. Um, at this point also, I'm going to go on isolation uh, and look at the, <clears throat> look at all the, the pan isolators and make sure that everything looks good. They're working well. They haven't developed excessive play in pan because really the way we want these to function, we want them, we want pan to never feel loose or rattly. It needs to be preloaded all the time in order for us to tune the gimbal to the maximum potential. So. These isolators, we want to make sure they're not worn out, that the, that the isolator still fits tight on the post. These posts are also greased because they have to, the posts have to slide vertically through the isolators as well as translate. Um, and so to do that effectively, we've, we've put some grease on there from the factory. You can re-grease them once in a while if they get dirty or need grease. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna look at at this point is the boom uh, preload. So I'm going to actuate the two latches and I'm going to make sure that it feels like it's putting a significant amount of preload on the booms. And you can see, you know, when, it, when the latch is not done, you can see the boom can move back and forth very easily. We don't want that. We don't, we don't want this rattly or loose. We want this whole mechanism to preload against the mechanical stop here. So the thing I'm looking for is when I go to close the latch, it should take a significant force and I should see the ring displace in rotation as I latch it. And I can see definitely on mine, it's very tight. If you, if you did ever need to adjust the preload on the ring, you can do so with a little set screw there. Um, you can drive the latches in or out in length and that will adjust the preload. Um, and then, you know, other than that, at this point, I'm just going to go around and randomly check fasteners, make sure everything's looking good, make sure that nothing's come loose. I'm going to look at the contacts on the XT90s and make sure that they're clean, they're in good shape. I'm going to check the health of my batteries, make sure that the resistance hasn't gotten too high, maybe make sure that some of the cells haven't gotten out of balance. Um, I kind of have a mental model of the things that are most likely to fail, and I'm just going to, on for drone flying, I'm kind of constantly running through that checklist trying to prevent any of those things from going wrong before they do. Um, and one, one thing to, to keep in mind is just you, over time you'll learn the machine and anytime anything abnormal happens or something that you don't understand or can't explain, feel free to reach out to FreeFly support and we'll be happy to jump in and try and help you diagnose or understand the problem. I think it's with anything that flies and anything where there's kind of an asymm asymmetric risk it's really important to pay attention to the little signals that, that happen. Most of the times where I've had crashes in my past, there's been, the, at least that have been mechanical failures. Most of my crashes have been me just flying into a tree like a ding dong. But um, most of the mechanical failures, there have been little things, little signals that have happened beforehand that I had noticed. And if I had acted more prudently on, I would have been able to prevent. So. Uh, just pay attention to those little details that the, the machine will send you, the little signals they'll send you, and um, yeah, should hold together for many, many hours. The good news is that we have beat the crap out of this machine much more intensely than I think you're likely to do, so she should hold together well. Thanks.